Good morning. Welcome to this meeting of the Subcommittee on Landmarks, Public Siting, and Maritime Uses. I'm Councilmember Adrian Adams, the chair of this subcommittee. Today we will be holding a public hearing on LU-218, the designation by the Landmarks Preservation Commission of 550 Madison Avenue, the former AT&T headquarters as a landmark. The former AT&T corporate headquarters building is a 37-story postmodern style skyscraper located at 550 Madison Avenue in Councilmember Powers District. At the June 19, 2018 hearing held by LPC, 31 people spoke in favor of the designation, including representatives of the owner, New York City Council Member Keith Powers, Manhattan Community Board 5, Association for a Better New York, and Construction Trades Council for New York. Uh, Dakamono U.S., Historic Districts Council, Landmarks Conservancy, Municipal Arts Society, New York Building Congress, Real Estate Board of New York, Society for the Architecture of the City, and 32BJ SEIU. Among the speakers, 25 testified that the designation sh should allow flexibility to redesign the AT&T Corporate Headquarters Building. I now call on L LPC to testify on the designation. when ready. Good morning, Chair Adams. I'll be right with you. Good morning, Kate. <laughs> Sorry for that delay. It's fine. Before you begin, council will swear you in. Okay. Please raise your right hand. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this committee and answer to all council member questions? I do. Thank you. You may begin. Thank you, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to present this recent designation. I am Kate Lemus McHale, Director of Research at the Landmarks Preservation Commission, and I'm joined by Ali Rasulinajad. Um, to talk about 550 Madison. 550 Madison Avenue is located in Midtown Manhattan on the west side of Madison Avenue between 55th and 56th Streets. It was designed by Johnson Berge Architects in association with Simmons Architects in 1978 and completed in 1984. Clad with pinkish gray granite and crowned by a colossal pediment, it is an icon in the skyline and of postmodern architecture and marked a turning point in the history of 20th century architecture. Philip Johnson was a significant figure in 20th century American architecture. He began his career as a curator at the Museum of Modern Art in the early 1930s, where he introduced European modernism to a wider American audience. And he later designed such notable modern works as the Glass House in New Canaan, Connecticut, and the former Four Seasons Restaurant in the Seagram Building. In partnership with John Berge in the 1970s and 80s, he worked on many large corporate commissions and with the design of the AT&T Building ushered in the era of postmodernism. AT&T's new corporate headquarters was the first postmodern skyscraper. It was a significant part of a broad cultural critique of modernism beginning in the late 1960s and 1970s that led architects to react against the doctrines of modernism and the international style. 
Icons of the style include such works as shown here, Charles Moore's Piazza d'Italia in New Orleans, Michael Graves' Portland Building in Oregon, and the AT&T Building in New York City. Johnson and Bergui conceived the design for AT&T's new headquarters as a statement building in the spirit of Manhattan's classic skyscrapers, which John Bergui described as solid with a recognizable top. Clad entirely in pinkish gray granite to evoke an earlier time, it stood out against the many mid 20th century skyscrapers with glass curtain walls like the Seagram building purchased, uh, pictured on the left. The building's facade has a classical tripartite configuration that rises without setbacks to a colossal broken pediment. The base features a 110 foot tall entrance arch flanked by groups of flat arches that originally opened to public arcades beneath the tower. AT&T did not want retail on Madison Avenue. Instead, retail was included along a covered pedestrian space connecting 55th and 56th Streets behind the tower. These connected, unenclosed public spaces generated bonus square footage that allowed the architects to make the tower taller and more visible on the skyline. Architectural critics and historians have ascribed sources to the building's design, such as the Pazzi Chapel in Florence, Chippendale-style furniture, and our own municipal building, but no single work or historic period of architecture seems to have influenced the design. From the moment the design was revealed in 1978, the AT&T building generated widespread media attention and a range of critical responses, gaining significance in architectural discourse and even popular culture. Paul Goldberger called it postmodernism's major monument, while Ada Louise Huxtable confect confessed to having mixed feelings about the building, which she described as a pedestrian pastiche pulled together by painstaking, polished details. In January 1979, Johnson appeared triumphant on the cover of Time magazine, raising a model of the building in the air, the same year he became the first recipient of the Pritzker Architecture Prize. In 1982, New York Magazine devoted a two-part article to the building's construction saying it brought back craftsmanship not seen since the days of the great pre-war buildings. And today, a model of the building is visible behind Jimmy Fallon's right shoulder on The Tonight Show every night. Less than a decade after opening the building, uh, the building was leased to Sony USA in 1991, and the public spaces at the base were substantially modified by Gwathmi Siegel and Associates in 1992 to 94. The open arcades in the base were converted to retail space, and the covered pedestrian space at the rear of the building was enclosed with a glass curtain wall at both ends. The alterations were made with the approval of City Planning Commission and remain under its jurisdiction. AT&T sold the building to Sony in 2002, and since 2016, it has been owned by the Olion Group. The landmark site consists of the tower, a four-story annex at the rear of the, of the site, and the covered pedestrian space between them. Located at the rear of the site, the separate annex building is a simple structure containing loading, parking, and service functions, as well as retail and exhibition spaces. The public passageway between the annex and the tower originally contained retail kiosks and offer, offered visual and physical connections um, through the block. Our research indicated that the primary focus and intent of the design was the tower and its prominence on Madison Avenue and in the skyline, and the annex at the rear of the site was secondary. The designation report identifies the tower as having primary significance within the landmark site, which is shown here. Um, and as you summarized at our public hearing, 31 uh, people spoke in favor of designation, many speaking about um, hoping that it would have flexibility for public spaces at the rear of the site. Um, and to conclude, although it continues to arouse varied opinions, this is extraordinary tower is one of Philip Johnson's and New York City's most, rec most recognized skyscrapers. Included in numerous surveys on the history of American architecture, the former AT&T corporate headquarters building is known internationally as an important postmodern work and as a turning point in the history of 20th century architecture. And the LPC urges the committee to uphold this designation. Thank you. Thank you very much for your testimony. Uh, as I previously stated, I think that this is uh, another home run 
uh, for LPC. So I do congratulate you uh, and the team for putting this on the board for us. Um, this is a part of my past uh, um, stomping ground, old stomping ground, Midtown Manhattan. So it has a special place in my heart. I love the building, and uh, I thank you for the presentation. Great, thank you. Thank you. I am going to read a letter uh, by Council Member Powers in support of the designation. Dear Chair Adams, I write in support of the passage of the former AT&T building at 550 Madison Avenue in my district as a historical landmark. In doing so, I join with Manhattan Community Board 5, the Municipal Arts Society, and numerous other advocates to say that this historic and influential building must be celebrated and preserved. Since 1984, 550 Madison Avenue has been celebrated as a revolutionary postmodern high-rise skyscraper, redefining the architectural movement of its time. Rightfully designating this 37-story building as a landmark will ensure the preservation of its cultural and historical significance and secure its place among the great architectural staples of New York City. The former AT&T building represents a unique combination of old and new, representing the historical significance of Midtown as a booming epicenter of business while introducing an innovative modern style in its time. New York City is renowned as a site of architectural history and cultural richness. The protection of historical architecture like 550 Madison Avenue is critical in preserving our legacy of cutting-edge design and innovative work. I sincerely support the advocates and groups that understand the significance of this architectural landmark. I ask that you support landmark designation for 5 50 Madison Avenue as a legacy to the cultural and devel developmental heritage of our city. Thank you for your consideration. And with any further questions, please contact my office. Regards, Keith Powers, council member. Thank you very much for your testimony. I now call on Eric Hor Horvatz. Please step up. Just press the button and state your name for the record. Hello, how are you? Here we are. Thank you, appreciate your help. <laughs> um, thank you for the opportunity. Please state your name for Oh, my name is Eric Horvat. I'm with the Oleon Group. Okay, thank, thank you. you, you may proceed. Um, thank you for the op opportunity to address the uh, council today. My name is Eric Horvat, as I stated, and I'm here on behalf of the 550 Madison ownership and management team, which includes the Oleon Group, Chelsfield, and RXR. Together, this team is a team with deep experience, knowledge, and expertise in successfully and sensitively preserving and redeveloping historic properties while adapting them to meet the needs of modern tenants in New York and around the world. We treasure historic buildings and have a clear intention of owning this building as a long-term asset. On behalf of the entire team, I'm proud to confirm our strong support for the designation of 550 Madison's iconic office tower as an individual landmark. 550 Madison has a significant place in New York's architectural heritage. It's a symbol of postmodern movement and has been a recognizable part of the city skyline for more than 30 years. Since acquiring the building, the 550 management te team has taken its role as stewards of this important building seriously. We have stepped away from the design renderings that were made public a few months ago, and we have met with dozens of stakeholders and assembled a world-class professional team to breathe new life into the building and restore its place as a commercial destination in East Midtown. Delivering on the promise of, East, of the East Midtown rezoning, our plans for 550 Madison are to revitalize world-class office space while exploring the opportunity to nearly double the public open space at the site. Our approach is straightforward to preserve and enhance the fundamental architecture of, uh, architectural values of Johnson Burgee's original design intent to provide generous open air public space, remove the clutter of ladder uh, alterations, and dignify the tower by improving its connection to the streets in the neighborhood and the city neighborhood. All that being said, the tower is not without challenges. The reality is that it was designed for single tenant occupancy with a capacity of just 800 people. This is one of the reasons it was previously in danger of being converted to residential condominium use. 
the only viable way to achieve our goal of preserving it as a Class A commercial destination is by making smart and sensitive modifications that will ensure the property's viability as a modern multi-tenant office building. This will greatly increase its capacity to about 3,000 office workers. These additional jobs will have a positive ripple effect on the economy of East Midtown and the wider city itself. It will also become a sustainable model for historical preservation with the aspiration of LEED Gold certification. With your confirmation of the individual landmark designation, we look forward to completing plans for the building that strike a balance, respecting 550 Madison's importance while addressing his, these challenges. In the coming months, we expect to begin to engage with the public, the Landmarks Preservation Commission, and the City Planning Commission on this new design, a process we're eager to begin. We're very excited about the future of 550 Madison and are happy to reiterate again the ownership's strong support for this designation. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you much for your testimony today and um, thank you for your involvement with the process. How long have you been involved with the process personally? I'm very new to Oleon. I have been with the firm for three weeks. Prior to this, I was involved with um, another project, which was One Chase Manhattan Plaza, now 28 Liberty, and also a landmark process and a similar respectful project we went through. Mm -hmm. And will you be, uh, this is, will you be around to see this process through? My word. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much for your Thanks testimony. Much. Appreciate that. Are there any more members of the uh, public who wish to testify in this matter? Okay, seeing none. The hearing on LU-218 is now closed and the item will be laid over. LU-231, the Bronx Animal Shelter, is laid over until November 5th. This concludes our public hearing for today. I'd like to thank the members of the public, my colleagues, council, and land use staff for attending today's hearing. This meeting is hereby adjourned. <laughs>